first epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Corinthians, chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Right? He's talking about Exodus. When they were led by the cloud during the day and the fire during the night. And passing through the sea, they're talking about when the sea parted during Exodus and everybody got out of Egypt. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Well, that's right. They went through the water, huh? And the cloud makes water too, huh? It's kind of baptisms. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So remember that rock. They're not bringing it up. But he is in a way just by bringing it up. Remember that rock that he struck. And isn't this part of the reason? It, it's not just the murder that he did in Egypt when his fellow. Well, they're not his fe fellow. It was his religion, but I don't know if he really knew it at that point when his the Hebrews were getting beat by the slave masters, but he he kind of just knew it in his soul. Maybe he already knew it. He, he was starting to figure it out. I think he knew it. He may have known it at this point. But the other crime they say he committed is when he struck this rock in anger. Like, can you believe that he cannot see the promised land because he struck a rock in anger but that's the case so he's talking about Moses big time the clouds right that would follow the people in their tents and tell them where to go and the fire at night but they were talking about water so the clouds and passing through the sea and then the rock of water, where the water flowed out right where Moses got in trouble because he, he was uh, upset at God a little bit, or the people, they were just bothering him all the time, right? You're like, why do we, like, they're getting fed every day, right? It's like manna from heaven. And they're, they get fed up with it. They're like, you know, we're sick of this, Moses. And it, it's like, really? You know? And even that was like a whole ritual. They're like, they're not supposed to pick it up. Out. They're only supposed to pick up a certain amount or something for a certain time when that was occurring and not pick up too much. There's some rule about the manna. I forget what it is, but it was some rule about it. And they kept complaining. And then they're like, you know what? No, we are sick of it. And then guess what they got? Um, pigeons. Or squab. Right? Were those other things called? <sighs> yeah, they got sent meat. They got sent pigeons. So, they were always complaining. And I feel bad for Moses because even when he struck this rock, I don't think he was mad at God. He, well, if he was, it was for dealing with these people, right? That are just, they just, you know, that's how we are. We just, Want more. It's never good enough, right? Okay. That's the flesh. That's the flesh talking. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Well, okay, he's taking it back to Moses, but there's a lot of kings in there. Things like Jezebel and hit her daughter, who was worse. And a lot of other people did a lot of evil things, but he's taking it back. Neither be ye idolaters, 
as were, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. He must be talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Twenty-three thousand. We can look that up. Sodom and Gomorrah, question mark. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Remember this, kids? Who is that guy? He was bald. <clears throat> what was it? It wasn't Malachi. It was... Who was it? It may have been. But there were kids, and they made fun of him for being bald, and then they all, like, got eaten by a bear. Or they all, like, died on the spot, right? That's, like, murmuring. Yeah, that's a pretty messed up story, right? You wonder how old they were, but they must have been the age of consent. And it's, it's showing God's pretty serious about that. Yeah, they were just making fun of him being bald, and they got struck dead. So, that's talking about um, inward destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them for N samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Right? That's good to know. Common. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. That ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord in the cup of devils. You see that? There we go. That's a, that's a good one. He says... That's so what we can use every day, right? You can, I use that in two ways. You say you have to, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, right? You know what else will be filling you up, you see? Also, uh, Jesus is not your bride. And, and then you have another uh, boyfriend, right? You, you're not Jesus' bride and Satan's, you know, hussy. Like, that one. Here it is, right? So basically, you can't serve two masters, right? You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Okay. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Are things, all things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question, for 
conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Yeah, right. Like, they're not going to put a big pig in front of everybody and expect people to eat that. But I'm not asking questions. I'm going to excuse it. I'm going to go dance. Yeah, oops, don't need to eat today. But if any man say unto you, this is offered and sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake, then shoot it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Yes. There we go, everybody. There we go. There we go. The past six years in a nut bucket. Yep, there it is right there. All these strange new laws that came in and everything, right? You see what it says? Why is my and people trying to force vaccines into you at the risk of you stopping your job, right? Okay, what does it say? Why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I, by grace, be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? This is just ridiculous. He's, I, I, I don't know, I don't know about that one. Because by not stating that there are certain, yeah, if you need to do the Ten Commandments, God's, Jesus's, whoever Paul wants to call the Ten Commandments, Right? That the commandments that Jesus followed, right? There are no other Ten Commandments. So, it's like, if you wouldn't mind throwing in some ordinances or some, um, if they're called, um, laws, ordinances, and something. There's like two more, right? He needs to throw some of these things in here because what he just said is great. And now it's like he just took it back in the very next sentence. See, whether therefore ye eat or drink or what so ever ye do, do all. Wait, no, no, no. I didn't get that one yet. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? So, <laughs> no. you don't ever want to break the commandment. You don't want to partake. He's like he's backsliding right here to me. But the next one. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Yeah, but you're not going to be like, okay, I'm at a wedding. Okay, I'm going to eat this pig. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. See, he's kind of backstepping. He really, it appears to me, but I'm reading it wrong maybe, hopefully. But in 30, it's like a huge backstep. Because look what he does. 29, why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Right? And then he backslides and goes, for if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give, I give thanks? No, you can't, you can't. Because he says, don't oppose things for conscience sake, Right? If you, if you go to a feast, right, and someone's dumping a fat pig in front of you, right? No. He's saying, just, just go with the flow. It's what it sounds like to me. But <laughs> he says some other things that kind of balance it out, but it's like, whoa. Do all to the glory of God. Okay, but you're not... It's not to say you're going to be like, okay, I'm at a feast. Okay, it's my opportunity to eat the pig. All I have to do is, you know, I'm not doing it on my own. But, you know, Paul said, you know, don't don't cause a scene. You know, do what other people do. 
no, 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 no. I don't know about this guy. I don't know. I cannot be the only one. Oh, okay. Give none offense. I don't care. Look, he seems to care a lot about offending other people. He does. More than God. It's a fine line, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> look, all you guys say is I got an upset stomach or I don't feel good. You don't got to make a scene and go, I don't eat pork. Make a scene. Just go, go get something. Just say, oh, you know what? I'm just eat dessert and have some beverages. Like, you don't got to make a scene. God doesn't like that. Give none offense. Okay, but. Yeah, you don't, you don't give God offense first. I don't know why he's talking like this. God is number one. You gotta, you gotta be tactful within those, those rules above and beyond everything else. He's like, give none offense. What are you talking about? Neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things. What? Not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many. Okay, I can understand that. That they may be saved. Okay, you see what he... he okay. Now we kind of understand maybe why he's talking like this a little more. It's like he lives in a big city. And he's having it... Well, I'm just trying to make an allegory. He's going all over the place because he's supposed to be spreading the gospel. Nobody's heard of it. But it, to me, it totally makes sense because um, say you're running a campaign and you live in a city, you don't have to um, learn how not to offend anybody. Which, <laughs> goodness, right? So I respect that last statement. Okay, but give none offense. But it just, I just have a picture of a big wedding with them bringing out this giant pig. And he's like, don't worry about it, just eat it. I d I'm pretty sure he does not mean that. It's kind of vague. Um, but we're just going to have to err on the side of faith right now. Because he's writing like five more books. I'm not going to become argumentative because I don't understand. So I'm just trying to pick out the parts that I kind of think are great. So there were two in this chapter, at least. He says there's no temptation that you will ever have that's not common to man. That's good to know. That's comforting, right? And then he goes, you're not going to drink the cup of Lord and the cup of the devils, right? You're not going to be a partaker of the Lord's table and a table of the devils, right? These are very famous ones because it, go, it leads into you're not, right? You're not having uh, Jesus is your husband and the devil is your, you know, boyfriend. It doesn't happen like that, right? And, um, I mean, it really does not happen like that. <laughs> like, and then this one, I like a lot. He's talking about, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit. Okay. And we have to really consider it. He just said, not seeking my own profit. But the profit of many that they may be saved. So we we'll just have to trust this. But also, um, as a result of um, him not staining with particular statues or uh, bylaws, that's not the right word. There's another word. But statues is right. Um, by not placing those things, like saying, don't eat pork, don't eat shellfish, don't eat... It's like, he's kind of leaving this story open for, like, interpretation. All I see is, like I just said, 
but I'm just going to have faith that that is truly not what he is getting at. But I still am frustrated that he's not laying down some type of law. Hard statues. Statutes. Who knows?